Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I'm Darla and I'm gonna be planting up some bromeliads today. I am very excited about being able to do this video because I've been collecting these bromeliads, the ones that are sitting all down around my feet here for better than six months. Um, I have um, I've decided to go ahead and put them under this uh, beautiful pygmy date palm that we have here located in our front yard. I wasn't exactly sure what I was gonna put there, but um, like I said, six months ago when I first started um, purchasing them, I bought two of them that are in the landscape right here. What I did was I just took them out of their nurture cans and I plopped them right here underneath this pygmy date just to kind of see how they were, were going to do. And um, they've done spectacularly. I was more curious to see how they would handle the sunlight because these are the Neorgelias and they do require um, a very, very bright light and some sun. And this area that I'm standing in our front yard um, we have just we're surrounded by palm trees we have you know spindle palms and I have queen palm trees and I have fox palm, uh, foxtail palm trees that are all in this front yard that have just grown so beautiful lush and tall that this whole front area just gets what I consider to be a dappling light pretty much all day long and so I thought these bromeliads were going to really really do well here and they are so what I did was um, you know after I planted them I just when I would go to the nursery I would just pick up a couple here and there and then I would bring them home and I would just plop them right underneath this uh, pygmy date palm but I just left them in their nursery cans so today I am going to be actually planting them all up underneath this uh, this uh, in this garden bed underneath this date palm pygmy date palm and um, but before I do that y'all I want to show you um, I'm gonna just kind of pick one up here at random and show you um, these gorgeous bromeliads now there are like so many different varieties of bromeliads that are out there and probably the one that's um, the most common that you will recognize is the pineapple uh, pineapples are actually um, in the bromeliad family and um, I just thought that was kind of cool and you know if you look at like these bromeliads even though these are the neorgelias you can kind of see you know that that strappy leaf you know much like the pineapple leaf has um, and um, you can you can see the resemblance for sure but again these are the neorgelias and they are are, um, they're absolutely beautiful. The one that I have here is like, um, he's got like maybe, uh, you know, two, two colors, good two colors, I think. Some of them are like tri-color. Let me see if I can find one that's got even more color in it. Now this one right here, this one's got a little bit more of a tri-color in it where he's got, you know, red and he's got um, the striped uh, green and yellow leaves. They're absolutely gorgeous. And um, what these neorgelias, um, what a little bit about them, they um, are epiphytes. And basically all what that means is that they don't necessarily require a soil to grow in. These guys can, you know, well, where they're found in nature, you know, like in um, the Brazils of, uh, or Brazils, the jungles of Brazil, you know, in the rainforest, you know, in South America, you know, they're found growing, you know, on the sides of trees. And what they basically do is they use their root system as an anchor to adhere to, you know, the trees and everything. And then they derive their nutrients um, two ways, actually. In the center, there's a, a little cup and um, it fills with water. Um, as a matter of fact, when we bring them home, um, we are supposed to make sure that we keep them filled, um, that those little cups filled with water. But in nature, you know, as it rains and everything, the cups in the center um, or the little funnels, they fill up with water. And then um, also, you know, through organic matter in the air, um, it would uh, take it in from, you know, with their leaves. Now, while they do, um, they would take nutrients, you know, through their roots somewhat, they don't require their roots for, you know, that's not how, how, their, um, how their roots are necessarily designed to take up, you know, their nutrients. Again, it's from the cup and, you know, just from organic matter, you know, in the air. But the way I'm gonna be growing them today is I'm gonna be growing them in the soil, um, in the landscape and everything. And um, I'm gonna be making sure that their little cups, you know, are filled in the center, which we don't usually have a problem because we're pretty wet here in South Florida. But um, you guys, they're just, um, they're absolutely um, fantastic, you know, little plants. They really, really are. And um, I think that, um, um, their their growing pattern um, is really quite cool. Now this one probably not as as much, but let me see if I can find one that actually. Well, for example, the one that I sh I showed you that's the tricolor. This one grows like in a um, in a like a like a rosette pattern, and they all kind of you know resemble that like a little rosette pattern with you know the way their leaves are all really closely set together, and um, I think that's just kind of really cool. And they are compact. 
they stay about you know anywhere from you know 16 15 16 inches high and they get you know about you know one to two feet wide and um, so they're you know you can nestle them in to you know pretty much any you know anywhere so for example if you had like um, you know an area where you were growing you know like succulents and cacti you know cactus and stuff these would be uh, you know a perfect um, you know a perfect addition to that garden bed um, although they would need uh, maybe a little bit more water than say your cactus and everything but um, I just as I'm talking to you guys I also am seeing here now when I when I put these guys in um, they will keep reproducing they will uh, produce what they call pups and I'm going to show this to you because I thought this was quite quite uh, cool now their little root system that you can see it's just really um, it, it I mean it kind of looks like it's you know really really kind of crazy and everything but it's really fine the roots are really fine textured they're not um, they're not tough or anything like that and actually the soil is quite dry, but because that little cup in the center has got uh, some water in it, it's thriving quite beautifully, as you can see. But these roots, you know, like I said, they are used more as an anchor, um, you know, to adhere themselves um, to the sides of, you know, of structures and stuff. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Can you see this little pup right here? Here's the mother plant that's right here and then growing off to the side from the bottom. And oh, look, I got a little one over here too. I got another one starting. Eventually what's gonna happen is this mother plant, as she dies, these little pups are gonna go ahead and they're gonna just kind of take her place and they will open up and look as brilliantly as what mama looks. And I just thought that was kind of cool because I don't really think that I'm going to need to come out here and I'm not going to really need, maybe, maybe as mama dies back and starts looking a little, you know, gangly or whatever, I can go ahead and just, I will be able to just go ahead and cut her off. But for the most part, I think where they're going to be located, they're just going to, you know, mama will just eventually rot and I'll just be able to come over and just kind of pick her up and throw her out. And the babies are just going to kind of fill in very nicely, or at least that's what the hope is. But um, I'm trying to think, um, oh yeah, I wanted to tell you about the, um, the center here. Um, this little funnel where you actually put the water. Um, these guys also have um, little, like they, they bloom. They have like little uh, cluster flowers down inside. Now I will tell you, um, these are so beautiful that honestly when, when buying flower, when I've had mine out and everything and they flower, I mean, they're really pretty, like, if you are, like, up close and personal, but it's not something that would, like, draw your eye from, you know, the road or, like, when I'm in the house, I wouldn't be able to necessarily see those or whatever. So, I, I'm not growing them for, you know, the, the little cluster plants. All they are very, very pretty inside there or whatever. They are definitely known for their beautiful foliage, um, foliage color. And every once in a while when I come out, I will see, like, little amphibians, like, little itty-bitty tiny frogs living in there, which I think is really cool and actually um, very very efficient um, as far as their workers for me because they eat the larvae of the mosquitoes because obviously again here South Florida you know um, the hot and humid climate brings mosquitoes so what I'm gonna do you guys is I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys all nestled underneath of this pygmy date all planted up into the soil and then what we'll do is we'll come back and take a look at just how gorgeous I know that they're gonna look so let's go ahead and get these guys planted up
Well, I got them all planted up and they look absolutely gorgeous. You know, it was funny because as I was planting them all up, I kept thinking, oh my gosh, it is so humid out here. Of course, you know, we're in April and um, the humidity is just like going higher and higher and higher. Um, and I thought, you know, as much as I was sweating my butt off planting them, these guys are loving their life. That's for sure because the more humidity and more warmth they get, the more fantastic they look. But y'all, in, in all honesty, they just, uh, they look absolutely gorgeous. I am so thrilled with um, the way they looked. And, and I was pretty sure that they were going to, uh, this was going to be the perfect spot for them. But um, I want to just kind of talk to you a little bit about when I was planting them real quick. Um, when I was using my auger um, to go through, now this flower bed is just, obviously it's full of, you know, palm trees. And so I'm dealing with a lot of roots and everything. And under normal circumstances, when I'm digging a hole, I want to make sure I bust all those roots out of there and get as good of a, um, uh, a planting hole as possible. And I usually use, you know, garden soil, which I did use um, a little bit today, but y'all, I wasn't concentrating on getting like a really great hole, uh, planting hole for it to go into. And I wasn't really concerned about really um, making sure that, you know, air pockets are out and, you know, all the soils pushed up around. Um, and the reason why is because again, back to what I was saying in the beginning of this video, these are epiphytes. And so they do not necessarily need a soil um, with that terrain terrestrial, you know, uh, landscape to, to grow in. Um, they, while I am putting them in the ground, you know, to anchor them, um, they're going to be deriving their nutrients um, from obviously um, the funnels, um, you know, in the center where they collect that water and of course their leaves. And uh, those roots are just going to help to kind of anchor them down. So I put a little bit of garden soil around them, but again, I wasn't really overly concerned about really, you know, getting them in there good and, and letting those roots really grab hold because, um, it's not something that is uh, generally a problem with the with these types of bromeliads. So um, anyway, you guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed um, a little bit, you know, learning a little bit about if you don't know about the Nor uh, uh, Neorgelia bromeliads. And um, I think they're going to do fantastic here. I'm, I'm very confident of that. And um, if you guys are enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, definitely click that subscribe or that subscription or subscribe button. And uh, we'll just plan on seeing you guys in the next video. Bye!